Welcome, this is Jeff. This is my YouTube channel where we do astrophotography and talk about astronomy and meet some interesting people in astronomy and talk about projects. So I invite you to stay around, check out the channel, check out some of the videos. Please like and subscribe. And tonight, what are we gonna do? We're working on a project. We've had some pretty nice weather. This is January the 12th and today was a gorgeous day. We're here in Appalachia, West Virginia, Huntington, West Virginia is where I am each out of, and then we're in the backyard tonight. This is working on a project with the Cone Nebula, and it's a project we're working on. I'm going to go over the components and exactly what's going into what, how we're trying to put this image together tonight, and exactly what this image, uh, what the object is. This is a supplementary project I'm working on of that spaghetti nebula in Taurus. So it's a wider field of view, and this isn't going to be the subject of this video, but um, this is more of an experiment. We're playing around with some things, and we've had some nice weather. So I've got another night to do on this, and we'll see how that comes out. And I'll share that with you online and, and probably in the YouTube community tab. But tonight, this is our focus. So let me show you some of the components that we're using tonight. We're hoping to wrap up what is called narrowband imaging. It's three colors that we put together to form an artistic presentation of the object, subject to a lot of interpretation. And we'll go over that in a little bit, but let me show you what we're doing here. This is the Celestron Rho Ackerman Schmidt Astrograph commonly referred to by the acronym RASA. What really makes this an exciting imaging instrument is this F2. The speed of this, these optics really open up the ability to use what I'm doing tonight, and that is narrowband filters. So not only is this RASA fast at F2, it has a really nice focal length. If you can imagine, this focal length is 400 millimeters, so it's roughly a 400 millimeter telephoto lens. Not extremely long in its focal length, but again, what makes this so exciting as an instrument is that F2 imaging speed. And 400 millimeters does a really nice job of framing many astronomical deep sky objects. So instead of using a traditional Bayer matrix color camera, that's how most cameras are today, they use a color matrix where they have an RGB filter system that gives you, gives you the colors. This is a monochrome camera. So what we do with this monochrome camera is we utilize these narrow band filters, and I'll show you them in a minute, but they go in this filter drawer. And these filters are utilized to capture the individual color components, the red, green, and blue components. So another feature that's unique to these astronomical cameras is the fact that they can be cooled. 
you see the fan there, and they have a honeycomb shape on the body that also helps dissipate heat that's built up through the electronics and the, and the CMOS sensor. And that cooling can be upwards of minus 20 degrees Celsius. And that what that does, it helps to reduce the noise that accumulates on the chip during the exposure. We're talking about exposure times of five, 10 minutes. So all this is done to help improve what's called the signal to noise ratio. We want to get more of the nebula and less noise. And that's the beauty of astronomical cameras being cooled. In order to achieve three colors by using a monochrome camera, we're using these very selective color band filters to achieve the red, green, and the blue. Why do we do this? These filters really help cut out light pollution. So you have what's called the hydrogen alpha channel. And you can see here the, on the spectrum where hydrogen alpha, where the hydrogen alpha line is. And it's very narrow. You can see you can have light pollution in here, generally in this part of the spectrum. And these filters, this filter in particular, does a beautiful job of filtering out light pollution. But I also like the artistic presentation and capabilities that are, that are afforded by using what are called these narrow band filters. That's what's narrow about it, is it filters this narrow line of emission and blocks out the, the light pollution that's typically in this area. This is where the O3 channel is. Right here, you can see the near the hydrogen beta, O3 and the sulfur 2 channel, you can see right here, listed at 671.6 nanometers. But then what we do is we take these three images and we combine them to get our color. And I'll show you how that works here in a second. This is the interface that we see while using the iPad and the ASI Air remotely via Wi-Fi engaged with our imaging system. And this is the night we were using the O3 filter. Now that box you see moving is what we call our auto guider. That's a separate camera and telescope that tracks the stars accurately so we have nice sharp stars in our image. So what I'm going to show you is this is the O3 night. We're taking 10 minute exposures. You'll see here I only have the sensor down to minus 10 degrees Celsius. I forgot to reset it to minus 20, although it was very cold this night. We could have gotten a lot colder. But this is the O3 filter. Most objects don't show signal across all three spectrum, but this object does. This is the hydrogen alpha view, raw. And what I'm going to do is zoom in on what we call the Christmas tree cluster portion of this cone nebula. It's an upside down Christmas tree. And so that's a hydrogen alpha. Most objects are very strong in that spectral line. And this is the O3. It had nice signal and the S2 really had a nice signal as well. So this is how the raw image captures look via our interface with the ASI Air. So let's take a look at where this object is in our night sky. Remember, NGC 2264, the Cone Nebula. So here we are in Sky Safari 6 Pro. And we are looking at the night of January the 12th at about 1049. And we are looking due south. What I want to give you some reference points here. This is our due south coordinate marker here. What you're seeing right here, this yellow line, is called the ecliptic. That's the path that planets travel across our sky. And right here, you can see the constellation Orion, the hunter, and Betelgeuse. And then we have the cone nebula selected right here, just off the shoulder of Betelgeuse, in Monoceros, the constellation 
monoceros. So let's zoom in a little bit. Now again, if you remember, this reference box right here is roughly the size of the field of view of the telescope I was using, the Celestron 8-inch Rasa 400 millimeter focal length with the ZWASI-294MM Pro mono camera. And so this is the full extent of the nebulosity. Now I wasn't getting 100% of it, but we certainly see this dark lane that's outlined right here. And we certainly are seeing the nebulosity and the, the cluster, star cluster structure that is referred to as the Christmas tree. Now, sit with me here for a second. This is an upside down Christmas tree. So right here is the cone nebula. And that's the top of the tree. Here's our top Christmas star. And if you can follow this line down, here's the base of our tree. So you can see this shape here represents the Christmas tree, and that's the star cluster that is really regarded as NGC 2264. Now this was discovered by William Herschel around 1784, and then he discovered the nebulosity part around 1785. But it's a bright star cluster. It can be seen in binoculars. I do see where the Astro League, I believe, has it as part of their urban program for observing. That's the only reference I could find quickly about what observing programs within the Astronomical League do recognize NGC 2264. So let's see where this object is in our galaxy neighborhood. Here we have the top-down view. Here we have the side view of our Milky Way galaxy. And you can see where we are with the sun. They mark the sun here in the Sky Safari Pro. Let's zoom in a little bit. What you're going to see is this NGC 2264. You see all the arms coming off the barred spiral galaxy. And right here is the Orion, what's called the Orion Spur. The sun is in that. This is our neighborhood. And there is NGC 2264. So it's still in our Orion Spur of the Milky Way galaxy. It's about 2,600 light years away. These stars in that cluster are relatively young, one to four million years of age. And the star that really excites this molecular cloud is this star right here, S. Monocerotus. That is the star largely responsible for ionizing this molecular cloud here that's really birth, giving birth to many, many stars. So to summarize, we have an object here that is largely categorized by the NGC 2264 designation. But you have some components in here that are really referenced separately. This section here is called the Cone Nebula, and you can see why, this cone structure. Then you also have that asterism of stars, that star cluster, that forms that Christmas tree shape. So that's also called the Christmas tree cluster. And all this is about 2,600 light years away in the constellation Monoceros. And again, if you're looking due south, right now midwinter, this green line right here is the meridian, the division between west and east. And so Monoceros is in this area, just to the east of Orion. And that star cluster would be right off of Betelgeuse's shoulder. So that's where you can find NGC 2264, the star cluster visually. And if you're a photographer, obviously you can get long exposure photography to reveal that nebulosity that's around that star cluster. Now this is with the Oxygen 3 filter. If you remember, that was in a very narrow part of the spectrum, around 500 nanometers. But it can be compromised a little bit by moonlight and some light pollution. But in this case, I do suffer a little bit from some star flaring, some star reflections off of that filter. But for the most part, it is such a unique nebulosity. Let me show you this, the O3. This is the O3. 
let me show you the S2, a really nice object. I'm probably the problem with this is I ran out of sky conditions and just did not get enough signal to really do this justice. But this is the S2 data, and I'm going to get more on this object with the S2 filter because it looks beautiful. I just needed more data. But look how radically different it is from the O3 to the S2. And then let's bring in the hydrogen alpha. Now this is the star field that's also still remaining in the hydrogen alpha. You can see how unique each of these filters are in representing that portion of the nebulosity that's emitting light at those various spectral lines. Again, this is the O3, around 500 nanometers, the S2, around 670, and the hydrogen alpha, around 656. And many objects don't have this much signal in all three of those channels. But the cone nebula region really does have a lot of emission in all three of these. So like I said, I decided earlier to um, remove the stars. And then also when you have these colors, you can, to me, it's a, it's a creative license to take this color where you want. I'm not as obligated to, when I'm photographing with RGB, straight natural color, I'm somewhat obligated to try to be faithful to the way the object would appear naturally, the natural colors of the object. But in this case, I feel like there's artistic license with these filters. But this is what, I did not process this, this is just a very rough RGB type of assignment to those individual color spectrum. And I just knew it wasn't where I wanted to take this image, so I didn't pursue it very long. But now this is the starless version of the hydrogen alpha that I did put up on the web and is now part of the fine art print portfolio and I just love it. You can see what happens when you go from a star version to a starless version. Now the hydrogen alpha data in this image was fantastic. Very smooth transitions across and just that's why I call this image the clouds of Monoceros. It's just a fantastic area of the Milky Way. But there are the stars and there it is without the stars. Like I said this is subject to a lot of artistic interpretation. And I really worked with a lot of different color combinations. And I came up with something I never envisioned I would. Because I really assigned the hydrogen alpha, which is the strongest signal, this signal here, to the green channel. Normally, I just don't like a lot of astronomical objects presented with a primary green influence. But I like what happened here. Let me show you the first first work through. So this is the the first work through with stars and I, what I liked here is that it gave us this coffee background to that O3. This is mostly the O3 data here contributing. I, what I did, I assigned green hydrogen alpha, I assigned red the O3, and I assigned blue to the sulfur 2 channel. Then I worked up the image a little bit more and took the stars out, and this is the final product. What I liked is it just gives us an almost 3D effect. It really separates the swirling dust of the Cone Nebula Christmas tree cluster here, the Cone Nebula. This is called the Fox Fur area right here. This is, this is a well-documented e region called the Fox Fur. I like that. And... I just love it. It gets, when I'm doing a tricolor, I want all three colors represented. And this is one of the best ways I found to do that. And that O3 really responded to having the red assigned to it because it provided a, a contrast against the, the clouds with the green assigned to the hydrogen alpha. And then I like how we transition. We get out through the greens. We've got some teals and blues. As we transition to the S2 component of the blues out here on the outer edge. So I hope you like it. It's now available in the fine art print section on the website. That's our journey to NGC 2264 in that monoceros constellation just east for us in the northern hemisphere east of the Orion constellation. Again it's an open cluster of stars that you should be able to see in binoculars and 
then the nebulosity is really kind of reserved for deep sky photography. I think if you have a larger aperture telescope, you might be able to pick up some of that nebulosity, say greater than 10 inches. But for the most part, I think that nebulosity is reserved for photographic exploration. And this is really a, a journey into that tricolor imaging. I'm still working on my technique and still understanding what objects have sensitivity to which of those narrow color bandwidths that we're trying to photograph. But I'm really happy with how this came out. It's so radical from what I originally started with. And that's why you get into this. That's the joy of this. Uh, it was a true artistic exploration of a deep space object. And I think it's a fairly unique interpretation. Some probably won't like it much at all, but others I hope will connect with it. And that's my presentation of the Cone Nebula Christmas Tree Cluster NGC 2264 Nebulosity, the Clouds of Monoceros. I hope you enjoy it, and until next time, clear skies. Thank you.